PTG TV. This is your host, Antonio Hicks, a.k.a. Escaping the Matrix, joined by my co-host, Mr. John Jersey Kedricks, and my guest for today to participate in this week's conversation, Marlena of Marlena Visions. Welcome, John, and welcome to the show, Marlena. Thank hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here with you guys. Oh, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, so um I'm 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 getting a little tongue tied right now. Oh my god, I feel like I haven't did this in a minute. I do that to people, I'm sorry. <laughs> you do so, have that effect. It's it's the hats. It's all the different hats that you wear. It's set, you know, it's that Tom Landry vibe. So Antonio, what's what's the what's the topic you're saying? Culture and technology. Like how does culture influence technology? Interesting. So I, I hate to say you know, put everyone on the spot, but when it comes to technology nowadays, like how old are you kind of matters, doesn't it? Because I'm 42 and we've I've li I've lived through like the, the analog days, whereas mm -hmm. I know people, a true adults, 20 years old, are like, look at CDs as like a foreign object, <laughs> like right. <laughs> so technology has made a lot of changes in a very short amount of time, really. It has, but I mean, I think it's made a lot of changes for the best. And I think that's why it's important because like Marlene, we were texting earlier and she was saying her and her husband talk about that like almost every day. And I'm like, people don't really think about how culture does influence what technology does, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to like translations. Because I'll see a, a funny post on social media, but it's coming from someplace overseas. Like it's in Arabic or something. And I can't read Arabic, not yet at least. <laughs> and so <laughs> I hit the C translation button at the bottom of it just so we can translate it into English so I can read it and see what the context is about. Oh. <laughs> I want to be informed. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's the same thing. Yeah, as, it's true. Yeah, because it's like with Twitter. Like I trust, well, I don't trust Twitter anymore. I used to trust Twitter when Twitter used to be honest. Because with Twitter, you know, you could get real time information from stuff that was happening right then and right there, as opposed to waiting for the news media to pick up on it. And then they got a report on it. I hadn't been on Twitter and I had a, a one of the guys, a, somebody who follows me on TikTok asked me if I was on Twitter. I said, you know what, for you, my guy, I'm going to get on there again. I said I had whatever. And then since Elon bought it, I was really haven't been on there. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, let me try it again. I was lost. I was like, what is this? I was like, what? Are you? He's like, it's just a chat room. I'm like, but what is it even about? Like, I don't understand. I was like, nah, this is not for me. I got apologize, but now nah, I'm going to pass with the yeah, hard I'm tweets. I'm with you, Antonio. When Twitter was like, when I used to use Twitter, it was more of I followed specific people that would, I didn't care about the 160 characters. They send me a link to like a full length article of whatever was happening that day. And that's, that's the way I use Twitter. And that's not how everyone did, but that's definitely how I, I would do it. No, I mean, how is, but, but, you know, it took something like it, you have to think about, like, how do we even get to Twitter? And I think that's really what it came down. Same as when it came to Facebook, like Facebook started as what is it was a college chat room mm -hmm. or everybody. Remember kids. MySpace? I remember back when MySpace. Oh, you really showing your age. Yeah, yeah was, I'm 38. Uh, I'm about to be 39. I, I was like, you're not know, really showing age. <laughs> yes, I remember MySpace. You said age. So let me go ahead and just put it out. I don't care. It's not and it's the same it. with uh, AOL. I mean, cause I come from, so I'm, I'm, I am the technology person. And so I grew up with the Commodore 64s and all that stuff mm -hmm, and understanding mm -hmm. how the technology was changing over the course of the years, especially in the eighties, when you used to have the little techno rooms and stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, what was his name that came out? I've got to see this was probably age. You start forgetting stuff. Yeah. You might have to start taking that D3. But that, that's the that's the whole evolution, right? So we go from, you know, again, that's why age matters, right? Where, where I grew up, like, uh, where we had old school telephones, like, that was wired to the wall. I didn't even... Yeah, you had to pull the cord to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah. And, like, you, I remember, like, my, my dad getting mad at my mom. She got the extra long cord, right? So it's Get off the phone already. I need a phone. You use the yeah. phone. It's my turn. It's been on there too long. <laughs> and I remember my dad losing his shit. When my sister got a phone, uh, got a phone in her room, like you're like, no. <laughs> Do you remember when you could have a private line? Southwestern Bell came out, and you could have your own private line. It was so exciting. I always, I was gonna save up to have my own private line. My mom installed one of those clear phones, you know. Uh, yeah, I had yeah. one of the clear ones, you know, that light up every time somebody rang. I wanted one of those so bad, dude. I was just like, I was all about it. I needed one. Yeah, but I remember those ages. That's the time I grew up with. Yeah, for sure. The the rotary phone, the one you had to go. -ra -ting, -ra -ting. Yep. <laughs> That's like white noise to me. I love that sound. And like, um, and my sound, -ra -ting, or you like the actual? <laughs> I mean that because it, I mean it sounds like how the phone used to dial out. 
You press it at one time and it's yeah. I loved it. Like, do you remember like the old old school ways when you're a kid and you're like, I need a ride home from mom, and there's no phone but the pay phones, and you do a big like call. Yeah. Like a call from CVS. And be like, Mom, I'm coming to get me. I'll count the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, see, that's the difference between living in a major city versus living in the country. We didn't have pay phones like that. I lived in the country, too. We didn't yeah, have, we it was, we, didn't we have got left phone. or we got left or you walked your butt home because right. you were probably pretty yeah. close. You know, you were not too far to walk your butt home. We we're probably walking home early, too. And we so didn't, Jersey you know, is if you said Jersey. you were going to be somewhere, you were going to be somewhere. Yeah, and the problem, too, is like back in our time when we were growing up, it's like you only had one line. So if you were trying to call somebody and they were on the phone, you know, you got a fast busy. I was excited for call waiting. You know, wait, I got a call. I got a call. Hold yeah. on. Little button. <laughs> Hold on. Hello. Or or, wait, or like some star six nine. I remember star six nine being able to call back, figure out who called you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like I, just, I, I had two older sisters. So like, I remember my dad, like, again, hating phones, hating everything about them. But like, are we got to have call waiting? <laughs> because, yeah, because you yeah, know somebody was always on the line because if you didn't have call waiting then who were you i mean that was your second line that's okay i got it on call waiting or right, remember you could page through okay. yeah so like here's some nostalgia yeah. for you i after high school i worked for dell so i worked for michael dell so like talk about technology and computers i didn't have an actual computer not even in the 90s like i remember not even knowing what an email address was like this guy trying to flirt with me was like Hey, my email is so and so. Me and my sister share like this thing. His and her 90s? name's like, yeah. In the nineties, like that's about right. That's about right. Yeah, oh, but I mean, <laughs> because because we like so computers really came like the first sets that we were they ever came out oh, yeah. were like back. So like I remember first and second grade, which would be like maybe mid eighties, and we were playing like Oregon Trail, and you know it was the black the black screen with the green letters. It's yeah. Yep. And it was nice. old Macintosh, you know what I'm talking about? So it was like this huge box. I remember that. And, or the the printer paper coming out with like the perforated paper with like the holes. The yeah, the real Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I remember that, but I never, I remember having a sign in, but our like our librarian would sign us all in and having it, you know. But when we got into like middle school, we had to take like science, computer science education. Uh-huh. And that's when I learned, okay, there's passwords involved. There's more to it. There's just spreadsheets. And then I started kind of getting more into it. And then in high school, I didn't, like I said, we were all giving email addresses in high school. So I was probably like um, 90, I'd say about 96, 97 around that time. Email yeah, yeah, addresses, but- really? Is that right? That sounds right. I was a freshman in college in 97 and yeah. we were given email addresses and it was like, what? Like, yeah, like, what is that? And yeah. all the so all the rich folk who had computer had, and I was poor. I didn't know what that was. We didn't own a computer. We were rich. The only though. time, yeah, we weren't rich. We weren't. I, I mean, I, I had one, know. but we weren't rich. Oh, well, I thought that was the thing because we were so poor. We were dirt poor. Like, the only time I saw a computer was in the library and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. Like being able to play organ trail, thinking, oh my God. And then seeing it later on in junior high, I was like, wait a second, those are computers and we're supposed to use them. And there's internet? What? There's internet? Oh you God, the internet back the then. Internet? Yeah. My like, kids like, would not survive if they had to go with, use the internet we used back in the day. Oh, oh my no. God, just the dial up. By the itself. Dial up. You have the. <laughs> like, I don't know if I get in trouble for this. I remember, like, that was freshman year of college. I remember that was when Doom was out. And a bunch of us online played Doom in like the Creswell Hall like computer lab, and all of us got online and played Doom, and we crashed the whole university system playing Doom. <laughs> it was so weak. Yeah, because it can't it can't support well. No. Even I mean, hell, even nowadays, if you don't have a strong enough connection, it can't support any online activity like that. But you're talking about then you going over copper. And it was dial up on top of it too. And it was like you only getting Yeah, there's no these micro there's no these fiber lines, these cables. Yeah. <laughs> fiber optic cables. There it was, was not ten to a two point five megs. Oh my god, it was so freaking slow. It was like, hold on, are you using the phone? Don't use the phone yet. Like I want to use the internet. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, you could yes, yeah, you could not be online and have right. on the phone at the same time. Yeah, because if you open it, if you pick the phone up, it will sound like you was on a fax machine because you would hear all the mm-hmm. data stuff coming up from mm-hmm. the phone. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, I'm glad technology. And just like you'd log on and just walk away from it while it gets going. You got yeah. 15, 20 minutes minimum. Yeah. yeah like, my kids will never know the struggle. Like they talk about their gaming experiences. Mom, it's lagging. It's lagging. I can't, you know, you got to restart the internet. Can you reset it? <laughs> I'm like, dude, like we couldn't even, we all we played with the little tink, 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 yeah. tink, tink, you know, the little, that's all we ever played or Oregon Trail. Like Sims was a big thing coming out too. Like that was the shiznit. Sorry. That was the thing, the Sims. Oh, no, that was the Sims coolest show. thing that, that was the, the coolest thing that hits since sliced bread. But it's like you can make these people walk around. For me, it was you Grand Theft make... Auto. No, I see, no, no. I didn't Grand Theft Auto first came out <laughs> and it was banned. So only people that was existed online knew how to get the game. Oh my god, that game was so good. Oh no, hey, I'm more like we got the Sims though. We have like I remember like, oh we can make them take a dump. All right, great. Oh. <laughs> like this is awesome. I was oh, like, oh my god, they're in their underwear. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was the <laughs> So I mean, so how do you think else did it, you know, culture influence the advancement of technology? Like I've been definitely helped out with education. <laughs> Absolutely it made it easier. It made like my daughters. So I've always taught my children and I've always had technology. See, if you want to talk about just technology, about cell phones, computers, laptops, that sort of technology um, in school, uh, it takes away like my daughter having to like, when she's dyslexic, so I always sat down with her to write her letters and numbers and stuff. So when iPads and stuff came out, their teachers were giving them and they were like tracing them or they were just putting them in or even typing them. She made the comment when she made the comment, I came to the realization is that, no, we're not going to be that lazy. She said, mom, why do I have to learn to read or write when I could just speak it into my iPad and it's going to type it for me? And yeah. I was like, what? And I was now, like, nah. How old was she when this was way. happening? She was in kindergarten because I didn't know still at the time that she was dyslexic. She couldn't communicate to me that she couldn't understand what she was reading when I was trying to help her. And then uh -huh. I was, we were going through the words and I was just figuring out that she was, it was a memorization thing. Like she'd memorized the, like the, what it looked like the word cat. She would uh -huh. memorized what the word cat looked like. And when I flipped through it, she'd say cat, but she wasn't reading it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And yeah. then like, and I would also put it like, you know, memory game, like you put the cards down and you flip it over the memory game. Uh -huh. I would try to scramble it up and I couldn't figure out that she was dyslexic. And then um, after so like about a year of just, I gave up on it because that's what I did. I said, I'm not going to fight her. Like she'll come around when she comes around and she did kindergarten and they were starting to introduce iPads and laptops and the kindergartners then um, she started coming home. Well, why do I have to learn it? If I could just speak it into my, she found out the buttons. Like she found out everything before I did. Like where you could go and have it translate to everything you wanted. And yeah. she was figuring all that real easy and it was making it so easy for at the same time. I was like, well, damn, it's going to help her out in the long run. Cause I was doing something that I couldn't do. And at mm. the same time, I was like, well, shit, she's never going to learn it. I said, I need to figure it out. So in the first grade is when I really fig we figured it out that she was dyslexic. So we learned all new different ways. Then we implemented technology. How was it going to help us? So reading to her, but us sitting there and reading it together also or writing about it in the story or writing a story out ourselves, whatever, which way we could implement actual writing it out, um, saying it, you know, vocabulary, reading it, trying to memorize how to spell the words, those types of things, because technology was making it way too easy. Like she could memorize everything, but to rec, you know, does that, am I kind of. Absolutely. Like, yeah. like, so like, but like she couldn't put words to herself, like if she was writing it down, but like, uh, this, this they were cool. spelling it for her yeah 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 i mean i think it's right. where we've gotten now where it's kind of the downside of it's kind of dumbed us down because you like we were talking about earlier with the phones and stuff you know how many phone numbers we had memorized and i had i have no yep yeah now it's like i may have two or three Dude. like i know my kids phone numbers and my, my wife's phone number but yeah anything outside of that <laughs> it's gone yeah, yeah. I, I remember my phone number the one i had when i was eight years old that's that's what you are i know i don't right even now. remember that <laughs> I know my social security, my driver's license, and my phone number. That's it. Oh, and my husband's number. Those are the I numbers I memorized. Number. You don't know it's, your driver's license? I do not know my driver's license number. No. That's like right of passage, my man. The driver's license number? Yeah. Really? When you get, Why do you need to yeah, know your driver's like, license number, though? You got to know your driver's license for everything sometimes, like doctor's no. records, medical records. Yeah, sometimes. Oh, Texas. Maybe that's just a Texas thing. It's oh, because I'm like, Texas. I pulled a card out. <laughs> that's a Texas Jeez. thing. I like. See, driver's license number is not a Texas thing. 
Who's our the Montes, whatever? What's our, what's our guy's name? Huh? I'm just pulling your leg. I'm pulling your leg. <laughs> but I know it, I mean, but it has helped out a little bit because I know when they first introduced like the TI 85 calculators, that was the worst thing they ever could have done for us in school because. I learned right everybody now. had to have one. I remember they required yeah. everyone to go get those stupid gray calculators. Oh, yeah. And that didn't stop till recently. Like, it's still a thing. No, it's still a requirement. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's still a requirement. In what class? I learned how to cheat. I, that's my thing. I learned how to cheat on it, though. Yeah. Because if you, if you knew how to program, like, you could program in the background and you could add in, like, any test, any, any, any test that you get ready to take that you knew the specific answers for, I programmed all that stuff in there. Yep. Dang, there you go with the tech. I wish I would have known that. Oh, yeah. I remember that. It was yeah. like, oh, you can't have anything in your pocket, you know, like you just got to have your calculator. Watch like, oh. me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember like in college where they actually, uh, there was, <laughs> then that's the problem with the TI uh, calculator, where like they said you can only do the old, like, um, like accounting calculator, the one <laughs> that was like solar panel, where you can only just do plus minus. You can uh, try programming anything because of that. There's that was rampant cheating going on. Um, and where, at UGA? Um, no, I don't forget. I just graduated college. <laughs> oh, because so, I was like that was CCGA. Yeah, so like I, oh, because I'm like hell, man. They, I mean, we still use TIA when I was in school. <laughs> well, I Even didn't my, go to college, so my kids had to use it. Me on that. In, does he use it now? No, they use their computers. Yeah, they don't. Don't These are iPads. My son's about to go. He's in eighth grade, about to hit high school. And in fact, he's he's. I'm gonna shine on him for a second. He's actually the, his principal's guest of honor today. They're going around to the different schools and the district. They're having like a luncheon and everything. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Thanks. And um, getting to the point of, um, dude, I just lost my train of thought. You did that to me. I told you. I was it. I was gonna ask you because um, you know you're, you're alone with the kids. Oh, like, calculus. Yes, that's what we're okay. talking about. Yeah. yeah. So he told me about math. He was excited because they were signing up for high school classes, and uh -huh. he's going to be able to skip or take advanced classes, um, AP classes, AP yeah. honors classes, and stuff like that. So he was saying it's going to be super calculus and pre cal is going to be super easy and trig because he gets to use a calculator and it's all on their computer. And whenever you asked me, I was trying to get to that thought and everything. I was like, so I, yeah, yeah, I, I did that moment. I wouldn't say super easy because I'm like, is he talking about cheating? But, but I mean, is he being smart? Like they're handing it to him. Yeah, I, well, and that's the thing, too. That's why I'm like, it's um, but it's a like, good thing and it's a bad thing. Technology in the classroom. Yeah, because it is. It, it, so that's the thing I had this while I, I, I one of my um my best friends, she's um a president of a college, and we talk about like how to use technology to help you out with writing papers and stuff. And we kind of both agree on it. Like, even though you might call yourself cheating to a little bit, it's still you have to learn how to use the technology to be able to do that. Cause I'm like, you're still learning. And you yeah. learn something that nobody else would typically want to get in there and learn too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I'm with you. There's a lot of programs out there where, like, like I said, I just experienced it in college just a couple of years ago, where, like, even writing papers, where I got dinged for plagiarism, and it was because I actually wrote a, a couple of pages for for fun. I emailed a different professor, and wasn't published, wasn't for credit, wasn't for a test, wasn't for anything. I just did it for fun. And then I had a year later, I had an assignment, and I was like, these two paragraphs would were great in this assignment, and I got dinged for plagiarizing my own work because. It's cheap. <laughs> like I swear to God, you already had it in the system. Because yeah. I don't know, but this like this like this paper that I had independent again. I wrote myself. I was like, I know exactly what I wrote it, and it's because the technology had found the, these two paragraphs, these two specific Matched. paragraphs somewhere in the internet that I had written. It was in a, so <laughs> that's the. Yeah, that's the so what they use in the school is yeah they they look for stuff on there they look for data on their own servers, and then they scrape the web, too. So because you was going to the same school, and you already submitted one paper in there, sure. yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, place mm -hmm. rock. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but like, it's so funny that you said that that's in school, um, and I'm just going to chalk it up to social media. I have my own works or works in social media, so if I try to go back and I don't use my own audio, it mm -hmm. says I plagiarize or I can't because it monetizes. Right. And I can't monetize my own work. So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, how do I go about, I have to go back and redo it. It's all about what you put in it, how you word it, why you putting it in the system, how it goes through their algorithm. 
it catches it just like your work with plagiarism in your paper. It all goes through an algorithm, especially if it's something that's uh, submitted electronically. Is that what you did? Oh uh, yeah, it was actually just the uh, email. I emailed email. the email. And most uh, universities have a like yeah. a Dropbox system, right? So everything uh -huh. that goes to Dropbox is is clear. They account. have so many. Yeah, yeah, they have a lot of things in place to help themselves out. That's so cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. But that's you're talking about technology and education and learning. So that just is cool. And There's I, pros and cons. Yeah. And to be fair, I, well, I actually learned two lessons. One was the technology thing that we're talking about. But two was she was right. You have you know, you can't plagiarize your own work. Like especially we're talking about in school at school setting, right? Where if you're writing a paper, mm -hmm. like I, it was my responsibility. Yes, I wrote the original one, but I still had to cite my original paper. Yep. Yeah. That's a thing, and so yeah, that's just that's another like. So I was. It's a rule. Like, yeah, I got dinged, and I, I was like, on the surface, this is like this is bullshit. For, I wrote <laughs> it. What the hell? But I, there was two reasons, and I was wrong both times. <laughs> at I least you're man enough to admit it. To where you don't have to worry about any of those things. Like there is no clear way for them to even, even scan AI to see if you plagiarize anything because it's all brand new. It's brand new content. Yeah, AI it's, is scary because that, that's where like they, they, you can just, but you still have like you were saying. So that's another question where AI can write papers, right? Yep. Can write page papers. Yeah, like give me a ten page paper on smoking, whatever it is. And, well, but you still you still have to be smart enough to ask the right question of how what, what parameters and that's the. Right. Well, isn't there something that came out that we're discussing about being able to finish like a uh, story uh, poets or writers who get stuck or have writer's block can ask the AI and they continue the story or help yeah. you write the story? You put your, Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So it has. So the big one now is, I mean, everybody has chat yes. bars, but the biggest one now, like Google hasn't released theirs yet. So Google has one of the project they've been working on. And and uh, Marlene, if you hadn't looked at it, I, I encourage you to look. It's kind of it's kind of scary, but um, and that's one that you could take to your husband and the rest of your family to look at it. It's called Project Lambda. So Google introduced Project Lambda two years ago, and Project Lambda, they now and they're saying it's like almost sentient, but it mm -hmm. has the purpose of it is a chat bot to give you real time conversation. Like it's like you can actually have a conversation with it. So. You can ask it one question and then it'll answer the question, but you can continue continue adding on to that same question and it'll just keep spitting out content like brand new stuff. So it's almost like you're talking to a real person. The one now that's actually been published out to the actual the community is uh, Chat GPT. It's open a the company's called Open AI. But Chat GPT is learning is learning from scraping data from across the web and across their servers and stuff, but now it's learning from also the, the community. Cause I think they reached like a hundred million subscribers, like in one day from people asking the questions and feeding more data into it. So now you can ask it anything and it'll answer it. And then you can turn around and ask it to cite its resources and it'll give you the resources it pulled from. So it's like it gets smarter and it learns yep. more yep. about you. Like, that's incredible. See, I, that's that we talk about that all the time too. Like what if this is an alternate reality or this stuff learning more about you than you know about yourself. Yeah, I, I, remember, I mean, I did. I remember reading into a thing, like an article about how, like, there was a big conference with a bunch of like these scientists who working on AI, and like it's scary, like, like, <laughs> like Terminator is coming, like, <laughs> like they. What about they're... like you remember that movie where the guy uh, transfers his whole like mind into like a artificial an AI, artificial intelligence? It's his whole. What was that movie? Oh, with Johnny Depp. Yeah, was it with Johnny Depp? I'm thinking Star Wars, but that's that's a no, different. not Star Wars. No. It's where he transfer. He's like he builds this huge computer, and like he's like I can continue on after, and he puts his whole like yeah transcendence he lives on through it transcendence. Yeah, I loved that movie. I love, but now you're talking about that's well. I guess it goes it just it does go into the conversation of culture and technology. Is is it really yourself once you transfer your consciousness over into a machine? No, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's just words. Well, that's I just... think it's you, but I think it's a, it's an alternate you. There's no soul, right? Because be you. your your person, the who you are now, the reason it's you even have the mindset that you have right now is because of life experiences. So it'd be just so, legacy. Yeah. So if you input in your words, your mind or consciousness into a machine, the machine is like a baby. It's starting over from fresh. So it's going to have to build on what it's already learned from you, but it still didn't really have all of your memories. Well, I guess it does to a degree, but it won't well, have right, everything right. from the it past. Would build more. What does it, but does, 
question does it build more as it goes along if it's supposed to last eternity and it's supposed to be your conscientious thoughts you put into them because obviously your soul's gone there's no body there like do you does it continue to still grow does it continue to still thrive like mem to me- yeah. have create more memory is, yeah, and learn like, more just or just learn more no it's because it's on a machine so now it's going to learn more so if it's you so if you were a curious person and you were like in that, in that movie transcendence not authentically well, I mean, I, like, again, it's a big philosophical question. I mean, this has been asked many times, whether it be the Matrix, where, like, all right, well, you know, are we, is that real life or not, if I'm aware of it? Or, uh, like, many other ones where even Westworld, like, kind of proposed that question. Is it, is it a soul if it's just, is it my body? Do I have to have a body to have a soul? Well, right? so the difference in a Matrix That's- and even in the, the Westworld, you, your body still existed. So the only thing it was doing was taking your mind and it was creating almost like an avatar of yourself inside of a machine. Whereas right. with Transcendence, the body was gone. Because in this case, I'm, you, Jen, if you've never seen the movie, you need to go watch the movie. It's a great movie. He mm-hmm. died because he had like this virus or something. He died from it, but he uploaded mm-hmm. his mind into the right. machine. So his body had gotten separated from it. Whereas Matrix and in Westworld, sure. you're, you're, you're still, still in your body. It. It's just, yeah, you're yeah. still attached to it. Well, like in the Matrix, that's what I say in the Matrix. If you ever died in the Matrix because it was t- attached to your body, you would die in real <laughs> life. You're dead, but, yeah. But this philosophical question is, is it's a fairly common one where, like, like you said, like, or if you put your, uh, I'm trying to think. There's many, there's many examples of this. You put your personality, put you know, your your id or whatever it is into another, like an avatar, whether it be a robot or what what have you. Uh, you know, is that does that have a soul or it, just having sentience to have a soul, right? Even Wally, like, is is that robot have a soul? Just to, you know, once it starts learning, and make decisions for itself. So that's that's the philosophical aspect of it. And that's where I was going with that. Does it go? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a form of consciousness, though. So it's it's not you. So in a sense, no, it's not you. It's just it's a clone of you. And it has its same personality traits from you. But it's still going to take those things and learn new things and build upon that. So whereas it start off as you, it can become somebody totally different because it might realize some of the stuff that you used to do was a mistake. And it was wrong. They want to correct upon that thing, or it could take the other side of it and be like, you know, the dark side. <laughs> and say, Have okay. you seen Megan? Have you yes. seen Megan? Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. That looks so scary and nasty. Is it good? That's a good movie. Megan. Megan. Oh. Megan. Megan is funny to me. It's not even scary. It's not even about that. I'm just like, it's just because the whole the technology and going back to that and AI and how she learned. So is it scary? It's not so much as it's scary. It's just that. It's scary that to think that technology is headed that way, that it's a possibility. I what things that scare me in life are things that could be a reality that could come to fruition. You know, I'm not afraid of this huge monster with fangs and teeth that was like tentacles. That's not right. what I'm afraid of. Yeah. I'm afraid of the guy who's gonna come at me with a knife. That scares me. Or like te- like Texas Chainsaw Massacre doesn't scare me. I'm not an right. idiot. I'm not gonna go up to somebody's house. Like the ring or whatever. Yeah, like the right. right. That the Texas, but the Texas Chainsaw me. Massacre though, it was based on a true story. It was, <laughs> but <laughs> not the way the movie portrays it. The movie portrays oh. is you know these people going in there blindly. Like oh, I think yeah. people went in. They like I get what happened in real life, and it did happen over time. They put it all into one movie, made it sound like oh, you know here let's go like like that commercial. Let's go hide in the shed. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not make- <laughs> <laughs> but um megan yeah that's because i mean and i can understand like and, and so because me and my wife we were talking about it too like we um with sex box i can understand and i it's kind of weird to put them in the same context but you have to put them no in the i got where you're going with it too because yeah. i was already gonna head there myself like those oh my god they pay what a car would be worth for those things and some of them are so real yeah <laughs> But it's, it's, it's the attachment with another person because sometimes people have to where they are, they don't, you know, like talking to regular, like us introverts. We don't like having any interaction with regular people, but we can do it with like computers and we could definitely do it with like a robot. And so in that case with Megan, you know, she had lost her attachment because she had just lost her, well, uh, spoilers for those who haven't watched it, but it's on Peacock for free right now if you want to go, <laughs> go watch it. But um, the little girl had just lost her parents and her aunt was trying to get her comfortable again. And so the only way she could open up, she opened up with that doll. And I think that's mm-hmm. th- I think that's great. I think that's something that we could use right now, especially with like autistic kids or kids who is like socially awkward and they don't know how to really interact with regular people. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. I mean, but 
now in the case that happened with Meg. So I'm gonna ask you this, so this is a sidebar <laughs> conversation. How do you think that she changed to being bad? The girl? Robot, yeah, Megan. Well, it's about protection, wasn't it? Like the, I, again, I was in the movie, so I mean, it's on my list. No, I. She just kept. Oh, what happened? It was a How doll. How do I think? It was right. the doll, though. I understand the doll. She became no, bad. I mean the dog. Remember when the, the dog, dog was attacking the little girl, and Megan came? No, the dog grabbed Megan. That was the first moment, but before that, she had already learned because she didn't want to be turned off. Right, but she wasn't. She wasn't like portrayed. She wasn't evil then. Like she wasn't trying to kill anybody then. No, but she had already had an attitude. Yeah, yeah, she had some sass. She had some sass, and that's where the sass. sass began. And what happened whenever she killed the dog? She wasn't going to tolerate it because it was about protection, and it was she didn't like the way you know it was. Is she saw the attitude from the other lady from the neighborhood? So we can keep. I mean, yeah, that that's not. It was. Everyone. But the thing that changed her, though, when the dog bit her. So if you go back to the movie. That made her a murderer. That changed. They gave her a taste of blood. Yeah, because it damaged her circuit board. Yeah, yeah, You you saw a spark in her brain. Well, well, he bit her in the head. You saw the spark in her head. And I was like, okay, this is what triggered. Now it's all. (laughs) Yeah, because it caused caused an error in her code. And so now, as opposed to being protective of, like, arguing, She's being protective of. She, she's she killed. They couldn't everybody. turn her off. Like she there was a there was a short in something that made it almost like she was possessed. But I think that you're right. The dog biting her made have short circuited something because he she took her after mm-hmm. the after asking her about it and she was like you know I guess she got the eerie feeling that she was not all good and she was trying to turn her off and she was still listening and the no. more and the AI learned by uploading its own code. So yeah. the more she started to learn more, like, you know. I guess that's, that's the scary part of AI. Like, I know this movie had, like, a, a critical point, but it's kind of a common trope where you have AI when it's learning, because that's what it does. It's just always mm-hmm. learning. At what point does it continue on its own? And when is the, the motivation of self-preservation? Like, yeah. Like, hit on, like, Megan was saying, I don't want to be turned off. But that's a common thing in movies and, you know, culture, media, mm-hmm. where, like, mm-hmm. right, it's AI, like, now it's, it's self-preservation. All right, mm-hmm. you know, how gone. smart does it get and oh god now what do we do <laughs> like mm-hmm. how do we correct that, how do we you know and like you were saying here comes robocop and you know terminator um and or what is that one with will smith where he comes out ai robot or whatever yeah i robot yeah i robot yeah uh and it comes to that question is when it's when does that moment happen are there a safe a kill switch that says they can't learn too much because after all we're making it to learn more yeah, we're right. liking it to to help out, to help more, to do the things that we're not capable, to calculate the numbers that we're not able to see in our mind. And the more it learns, the more it grows. You know, it's just where does that where does it stop? And where does it take over its own conscientious decisions, its yeah. ideas? It makes its own things. I think it's there to a degree. And I mean, I'm I like it because I like how it can see some of our flaws. That's why I would love mm-hmm. to have like AI, gen- like, like, well, AI like, um, uh, cars, mm-hmm. because then if everybody's driving in a control, a robot controlled car, then it will know, okay, I'm not going to just get over with no turning single, just cut somebody off and make them slam their brakes and cause an accident. It'll You're a Tesla every- fan. Uh, no. <sighs> I am and I'm not because, well, I am because Elon didn't start Tesla. Tesla was started by somebody else. But I do like the concept of where he's going with that. Yes. Absolutely. Well, well, yeah, we go to, like the, the concept of self-driving cars, for example, what you're touching on is that if we all drove self-driving cars, even to right today, right now, we start today, like accidents would go down. Absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, they're better right now. I mean, it's not better than every single driver out there, but you know, you of course you see uh, pictures and examples of self-driving cars, like not working here or there, but compared to the average human driver, it's still better. Well, look at these countries that are so far in advance in technology, like Japan and China, where, you know, they have whole foods inside a vending machine. All you do is got to add water. Um, they have those cars where there there was these, the flying, the, there's a flying car already. Uh, oh, who God. makes it? It's, it's, a not, fly- it's, it's not a flying car, though. Well, it's, it's supposed to be able to go, like, so far, like, uh, was it 200 yeah. miles? And uh, what was it? 600 something per hour i have no idea because my my nephew he's only 16 he's actually a pilot and uh-huh. he's been he's been working on it so i was you know i always wanted to send him little neat things like that and i saw it and i came across it and i said well it's hey, cool you want to come out by 2025 
and put one yeah. in everybody's hands. I need them to do something different with it though. So the one you're talking about, they have you said the one with the four uh, fans around it. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, yeah. It's just so it loud because it, it's like when they uh because they they introduced another one similar to that in Dubai for one of their tech conferences, and they yeah, had Dubai, yeah they said yep. Go ahead, they had sorry. the two. They had one. It was like well, both of them are like motorcycles. But the one they introduced in Dubai had like a big fan in the front and a big fan in the back. The problem I have with them is it's it's a great starting place. It's just so loud. It's like you're flying around a mobile helicopter, and then before you get to the God forbid you you land by anybody with a dress because it's all coming up into the air. And it's, that takes me to the point of who can drive it. Is that AI, yeah. I, I, AI, right. or is that somebody who has to practice to do it? Could it be just me, a civilian? Like, I think it. Well, see, in that case, I wouldn't trust technology then I, I love technology i mean I just, I've, I've worked in technology my whole life but i understand technology because in te technology like we all have seek has failure points mm -hmm. and like we've seen with tesla where it's randomly stopped on a highway and calls a six car pile up mm -hmm. imagine you flying in the air and this this technology is controlling your flight in the air and all of a sudden it has a glitch and you're going down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's the, yeah. it's the same with humans too though but i think I would like to see it, but I mean, because even if it's not AI, like we have, what is it, auto lane assist that's in cars now too. Right. And so it does a self-correction. So you start getting over outside the lane. It starts letting you know and pulls the wheel back over that you're exiting outside the lane. And then you have the brake assist to where if a car or you're getting too close to a vehicle or too close to the curb, the car automatically starts slamming on its brake to get you to correct yourself so you're not causing an accident. I like all those things. I do like all those I things. I like those things. My Lexus has something kind of like that. You know, but I think that's just sensors. Right. Like, my but, car doesn't park itself. Like I'm not that bougie. Like but it had, but you're, it's it's a computer, <laughs> but see, it's able to do that because you have a computer in your car. True right. technology, which is great. I like that yeah. part, but I don't want to give total control to. I want to be able to. Like the other day, um, I was picking I was picking my son up, and um, we were not running late. We were on time. And I went to the light, you know, you turn right. Some, you can turn right on a red hand light. Um, uh -huh. And there was a lane for that and whatever. And the girl in front of me, uh, so there's, you can come both ways. So we're facing each other. You can't see me on your, you know, the view, your viewers can't. But if we're facing each other, there's a light in the middle, which I could turn right and people were coming. So those both those lights went off at the same time. So the person coming from in front went and the person in front of me was going at the same time. Well, she got scared and slammed her brakes on. But if it wasn't for like, anti-lock brakes in my car and my system and the Lex is going beep, 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 I would have smashed into that back of that car. Oh no. So yeah and um, I almost had a fender bender like would have been really bad. I was paying attention but she was going to go. The light was green. It was good to go. She had already proceeded to go oh. and I was following her and my daughter and I were having a full-blown conversation like I said it wasn't if not for my car and putting up all those you know those th those alarms and triggers that I probably could have, you know, really hard into her. Um, so thank God my car has that. So I do like that part of technology, but to give control control over somebody, like I heard those um, automatic, those self-driving cars, delivery cars, uh -huh. like running uh -huh. over pedestrians or getting into the bike drive, like the bike lane. So here in Dallas, we have lanes for bikers, yep, especially yep. downtown. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, one of those, I mean, I don't know if I ordered my food and heaven forbid one of those were to deliver it and hit somebody, I'd be like, the worst ten dollars I ever spent. Like, did I, I, I eat my, my food. pasta that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as long as I got my food, I'm I'm good. I guess I mean that's just the where we're going, and I you're, you're right about. I guess you're right about that, but it's like, um, that's kind of what we just said, right? Where if imagine all delivery drivers were self driving instead of people driving, accidents would go down. You know, you may get that kind of deal with where that's the one. That's the one where the, the, the car malfunction hit somebody, but overall, yeah. less people will be hit. Yeah. Right. It is, but you know, we already have like the machine delivery services too. Like Amazon, I think it's, is it Amazon? I think it's Amazon. And other people, like they have the robots because I saw them like here in in, the, in Atlanta and in, in one of my places like downtown Decatur. I saw the uh, robots like delivering the stuff on the sidewalks to people like order Amazon products or, um, pizza yeah. and stuff and it was dropping it off for them I and saying, i thought I that was pretty cool and like even now we talk about culture and technology like in new york they've rolled out some of the um what is it D dynamic i forget the name of the, the, the robotic company but they have the robot dogs now out patrolling the streets 
Mm-hmm. It's, Here in hey, Dallas, yeah. they have those. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just saying, just, you know, you just pile on. Like, yeah, it's Amazon, I think DoorDash, and I think like even Uber, right? Mm-hmm. Uber is going in that direction of yeah. having driver. They were talking about launching that first um, taxi, air taxi here in Dallas. Uh-huh. Um, and they had already had some spaces on top of some building tops where they, the, the pad where they could land. Uh-huh. It's supposed to carry like, I think, six passengers. I think it's, um, it's, it's like a big old, what do you call it? Um, I just lost my whole train of thought. One of those things drone? you fly in the air, drone. drone? Yeah, a drone. It's, it's like a huge drone. But I think that's what's influencing everything, and I think that's what really helps us out. Even when I was talking about, like, even with the the sex box, we were talking about this because I mean, she was talking about doing a show on it, and I was like, you have people that are socially awkward, they don't know how to, uh, they don't even feel like though they're attractive to their, you know, the opposite sex or whatever, who they like, they can get a robot. So my my thing I was thinking about this morning, I was like, man, what would happen if they get a robot, but they put AI in that robot? And so the AI starts becoming self-conscious. And it's like, you know, the only time you come and talk to me is when you want to come and sleep with me. And outside of that, you store me inside of a closet. So now- He's like, I don't want to do that anymore. Yeah, I don't want to do it no more. Right, so now- That's not the relationship we're having. You're right. Well, no, there's a movie like that where, what's that world it's created um, where that girl, she's kind of trapped. Oh, damn it. If my husband was here, he could give me the name on this movie. Um she is an AI robot. She's artificially intelligent. She's kind of a prostitute and they kind of, you know, they put her out there and she's, there's this guy that frequents her and he's a human. He's from the above world uh-huh. and he's kind of like an upper class and he keeps coming down there and frequents her and visits her and she starts becoming smarter and smarter and realizes this isn't, there's more to this. And I, uh, I can't think of it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. And it's like a really crappy environment. She's only got so much more time left on her battery or whatever it is that she's living on. And it's like she lives in like squalor, an awful place, and she starts recognizing it's an awful place. And just, yeah. 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 Um, so it's like now you're in a regular relationship then. No, but then she starts to develop feelings for this person. She wants out of there. Like she realizes that there's life and yeah. Oh, dang it. We need to figure out what that movie is, Jersey. So that he can watch it. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's like once you introduce, it's almost like you can have those things, but once you introduce consciousness into it, what's the difference between that and a real person? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. scary. That's what scares me. And I'm, I'm afraid of death. So even that yeah, question, I am, I'm I like, I ain't even gonna lie, because I talk about getting old, and I hate that. I hate that. So we talking about. So we again we talking about technology and advancement of technology. So they have this new thing they're trying to introduce. Um, rad plus like they're always mm-hmm. working on something to reverse aging but this mm-hmm. is one of the key things they had worked on it was like over a decade ago and i'm sure they're more advanced than what they are right now but what they found is like we all have this rad plus gene inside of us and if you and as we start to age and progress like the, it starts to slow down and, and recreate itself but they found if they inject more into you and pull it from like a younger, almost like stem cell, pull it from a younger cell and inject mm-hmm. more into you, your body starts regression and you actually starts getting start getting younger. A lot of these actors and athletes are doing stem cell, like uh, it's it helping. Gron- yeah, it's helping. It's I mean, it's making all these athletes, these bodybuilders on steroids grow their hair back. And it just cure AIDS. Yeah, if you gotta yeah, hear about did. that. Yeah, I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Time, yeah, yeah, they had, yeah. I think it was two or three subjects they had overseas. They found they cured AIDS with it. Mm-hmm. Stem cells is doing things like I don't think I'll be past it. Like, if it ever came to that, like, I'd already heard like save the baby teeth because stem cells and the baby teeth, and if for Alzheimer's and dementia, like that was going to become a thing. Now, I don't know if it ever came to you know, I always follow that because that's something my grandmother passed away from was Alzheimer's and she had dementia. And I'm always thinking. Is stem cells going to be something that's going to help? Or is it all these studies doing with the brain? Like, whatever's going to help, because I'm afraid that that's, I don't want to be that person. Like, I'm afraid that's going to happen to me. Well, that's why I like nano machines. I don't know if you know about nano machines. Uh, talk to me. So, nano machines. So, if you're a sci fi nerd and you like the Hulk, so Iron Man. Yeah, and Iron Who? Iron yeah, Man. well, I guess Iron Man did. So Tony Stark did finally, <laughs> he did inject himself with nano machines later on down the line. The um, Hulk had it in him too, though. But nano machines is like programmed. They have one command, almost like a cell in your body. Mm-hmm. So your cells in your body, like the proteins in your body, have one one thing that they're programmed to do, and that's what they they're all known to do. 
So that's what they have done with, that's what the advancement is with stem cells. And they've actually perfected it now too. So hopefully later on down the line, like we, they, once we really start mapping out the brains and how our neurons work, they can program the stem cells to go into your brain and fix like the errors that's been happening from aging or, you know, uh, medicine that you've taken that's caused damage to your brain to where you won't have those issues. But that's, that's science and technology. That's what I think right. we are investing in as opposed to this whole, you know, we cussing each other out about race and religion and stuff. And that's and that, the beauty of, yeah, go ahead. I'm go sorry, ahead. Jersey. No, go ahead, Molly. Go ahead. Did they ask you? <laughs> no, I was just like, that's the beauty of where technology has taken us. And you talk about technology and culture. And I think that every culture, whoever learns, whoever implements technology, um, creates something new that benefits a human race. Like, look at what the things people are doing in India, the doctors there, or in South Africa, um, all these different places using technology to create hearts, to create um, body parts that otherwise wouldn't exist. Like all these new heart transplants trying to make people live longer. That's yeah. all because somebody else said, well, let me see what I can do with it here. Or let me, somebody's pushing the envelope just a little bit more. That's the beauty of technology. It's going to make us live longer. And then you get to the question, do we want to live longer? Do we want Absolutely. that longevity? We want that. I'm, a, I'm scared. No, like I'm afraid I, that, it, you know, I'm afraid of dying. Do I, want longevity? I want to live as long as I can for as long as God's going to allow me to be here naturally. And if there's something in technology that's going to help me, you know, like a something for my heart or something's going to help my brain. Um, but to keep me around indefinitely, like on machines, please don't do that. No, I don't want to be like a vegetable in a vegetative state. And oh, I'm no, hooked no, up that. and I'm still talking some miraculous yeah, way. Please yeah. don't do that to me. Like my I eyes to be a cyborg. Open. A cyborg. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Like if they said, you know what, we've got this piece of, equipment for your body that would work you know to replace your heart and you'll live longer yeah okay, but is that give what you just me. said you're against it was earlier so i know that's like, yeah I, i'm against you literally it. I'm just, just like against if it's <laughs> i am scared to do something like that i don't want to think for my natural but I'm talking, I'm talking about little things like not the entire heart like what if there's a valve that they can put into place that you know will unblock something i know that there's uh what they called stents you can put in yeah. what if there's a better what if there's something better than that well, I mean, what they're growing them? hearts in labs right now, too, though. Like, they have... Pig's heart, just like that guy that got a transplant with a pig's heart. I don't want that. No, I'm talking about they legitimately growing, like, hearts, hearts in the in the lab. Like, they have um, what fake... Uh, no, it's not fake. But they've grown, like, embryos and stuff. They have um, your fetus and everything. They've grown all this stuff in the lab now. And that's the stuff I'm, I'm really excited about. Yeah, I wouldn't mind living. Wait, what about gene altering, like, what they were doing... Yo, CRISPR. So yeah. CRISPR, so you can have designer babies now because of the uh, CRISPR thing the lady came out with. And I'm I'm cool with that too. Like, cause say you have a defect in your bloodline. I don't care if it's diabetes. I don't care if it's high blood pressure. That's oh, whatever it is. Just like a, yeah, yeah, whatever it is. I'm fine with gene altering technologies going in and cutting that part out of your DNA. I'm cool with that. Cause I've seen, I mean, I had a kid that died. So if, if maybe if I'm dealt with something oh, they could have detected that. that would have made him stay here, I'm cool with that. I see where you're going with that. And that's where you go to the philosophical question where it's like, where you have to draw the line. And is there a line to be drawn? We're like, oh, my, my kids got brown hair. I need him to have blonde hair. You know, <laughs> like we're like, yeah, we're, ethical question. Right? That's the ethical question of it. Right. Yeah, I understand maybe, uh, okay, but I don't want to go as far as th I understand what you're saying, Antonio, but like when you're altering things like, uh down syndrome like i don't think that should be altered like i think that's kind of you know quality of life is what we create and we can create quality of life for people with those types of illnesses and i get like cancer like maybe it for some reason it could take cancer out of our genome or or maybe it could take uh, alzheimer's out of it yeah. but i think the other things like if you're really talking about i want like he said it becomes an ethical question i want this almost Nazi ethical question. I want a blonde hair, blue eyed person who's yeah. five foot 10 and thin, who's got this, this and that. That's not, I, I think that's where, that's where I draw the line. I, I think it's- I, 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 I'm with you, I, I'm with you Marlena. Like it's, it's not, and I'm with, I'm with the both. Like Antonio, I think there are some easy ones where like the cancer gene, all right, this kid's gonna have cancer and die age too. Okay, yeah, like get that gene out of there. But I'm not, I'm not saying, 
I know where the line is that I want. Yeah, to me either. I exactly. Know the, but I know that the line exists. Yeah, me too. You know? Yeah, yeah. I disagree with that. I think that it comes down to the parents and the parents, their decision is quality of life too. Because you got to think too, because I mean, if I, if I think of it from a kid with somebody with Down syndrome, so if I put myself in that person with Down syndrome and how they would feel and how they perceive life as they grow up and the, the abuse they potentially has to have to deal with as they get older, maybe they would wish they would want to be different. And you can tell them all day long how special they are, but to that person themselves, they might say, well, I, if, if I didn't have to be this way, I would not have wanted to be this way. And then you have to think about the parents now who has to watch that kid for the rest of their lives too. So I think it really boils down to like anything. I always say it comes down to it. Like, like when I say it's I a think, woman's choice, I think it comes down to yeah. the parents too when it comes to the I kid in the house. I think what I wanted to say, I think I think I misspoke when I said, you know, especially Down syndrome, maybe that wasn't the example I should have maybe used. Um, when it comes down to, because those aren't things that you can detect until after somebody's created. If it's things like um, genes, like cancer, um, something, uh, spina bifida, something that could be like, because I, first of all, um, and I think that everybody should be able to experience life and be able to experience the joy of being a parent. Um, but oftentimes people with Down syndrome don't experience that and that they're usually the right. ones to carry that gene. Or if you know you're going to carry that gene, I think that, um, like you said, okay, my sister has Down syndrome. I may carry that gene. Maybe I want to get checked for it. But I, like, I, I think I misspoke. I think if it, you, you, you created your child the way that you wanted to, and then by God's hand, something else like that happened. Because I still think a child with Down syndrome has quality of life. So I should have never said that. That misspoke on that part. And I understand where you're coming from because I don't know how you lost your 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 child. Um, but I think like if you're able to alter that, would not alter it in a way where like I want her to be the model. Because like you hear Kim Kardashian's mom, she was they asked like Chris was get was being offered so much money to give her her eggs to somebody an Armenian woman so oh, that she'd have these beautiful children. And I think that kind of like that crosses the line there because you want a beautiful child, but you know, that's it's going on to say, <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm with you. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you're exactly right. You know, that's, that's where you're doing the aesthetics thing. Like there's a difference between like, let's say cancer or whatever it is. I'm not sure what the line is, but like, yeah. like, like you said, quality of life. Okay. So, and this is a harsh one. Like, you know, like that means I, I there's a reason why I would want my kid to be white. Right. You have automatic advantages. <laughs> you just do. <laughs> like, so I don't know. I, I'm not cool with that. Like, that's not cool. I mean, that's a societal problem. Like, not, not my kid's problem. Um, but maybe you would. And that would be a decision a lot of parents would make. I'm not sure how where I feel about that. That seems like an unethical idea. And I think there, we get, it gets dicey. And I get, like I said, I don't know where the line is, but I think there is a line. Yeah, which is why they're not. It's not for the public. Like to even get to have a CRISPR baby is cost you thousands. I mean, John and um, what's her name? Chrissy Tegan, Tegan, John, whatever his name, John Legend. Don't his, uh, they they had a designer baby. What? Oh, yeah. They she used... it, so they they did all that and then she carried. So it's like in vitro and then they carried. Yeah, I think it was one of them. Oh, she had health issues. She had like a lot of issues. That's why I'm saying yeah. so it was in vitro. I knew that they a lot of the times they try to do like create something first and then put it. I'm all for that. But yeah, like yeah. I didn't know it was like, well, okay, was there something that was affecting the fetuses before that needed to be I don't know the, the details, Christmas? but yeah, she did have they did have a designer baby where they had because they're beautiful people. I don't even know why you want to design them. They're yeah, gorgeous. No, yeah, they're gorgeous, yeah. Like well, Jesus though. Christ, yeah. like, oh my God. I, I don't know much about that, but I do somewhere in the vault, I remember somewhere saying that uh, like Chrissy D had like serious issues, like yeah. give birth or whatnot. So and maybe like it could have been just designer babies, like, but like just order off the menu. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure in that example. So, we yeah, we had yeah, we hadn't got that advanced. I mean, we have to a degree, but we haven't got that advanced yet to where regular people, I don't care how rich you are, can yeah. you know say you want somebody white because even though we've just mapped out, we've fully mapped out the DNA. We hadn't got down to right. what parts of it determine like mm -hmm. your sex mm -hmm. and uh, color and stuff. That part we haven't gotten to yet. They've perfected it. To where they can make you like a certain height or whatever, but 
that hadn't got out to the public. Yeah, they're starting to test it now. Like it was a study done, was it Virg- uh, in University of Virginia? Mm-hmm. They finished it out and they approved them for human studies. It's it's what Moore's law, right? Yeah, I, told, I, said, I, I, I told you, Marley, I'm a nerd. I mean, I, I look at all this stuff. <laughs> I love it. No, it's not that. I'm in shock. If I just can't believe that that's been approved. Yeah. Like, where did the you know ethnic council come in and say, like, wait a second? It's. I it's, just I'm kind of shocked. It's it's like with any kind of technology or advancement, it's like that Moore's law. We kind of started off with this. We're like, the more you have technology, the faster technology grows, faster advancement, right? Whereas, mm-hmm. like, a simple example is like, and the dumber we get. Right, like like TVs. Remember, I remember getting the seventeen inch TV in my bedroom twenty years ago, and then you can get a, a big screen that was the size of a Volkswagen in your in your living room for four thousand dollars, and <laughs> and now you can get a, a you know a sixty incher for a hundred bucks, right? And it's gotten so good, like you know, or hell, like dude, TV. it's all about the four K TV streams. Have you had one of those yet? The four K um, TV. There's yeah. only one reason I don't have 4K, and it's because of uh, my my internet's already iffy, mm-hmm. apparently. And I'm running only- it right now. It screwed every movie up for me. I can't watch that. I can't watch nothing on it anymore. All the movies that I thought were good are crap. You see too um, much. You see way <laughs> too much. All the well, I think it depends. On Even like, the backgrounds, you-, you can you can tell when the backdrop's a backdrop hard. What are you streaming it through? What do you mean? What I'm streaming it through? No, like what the whatever I'm watching it on. So you, yeah, so you have like, is it you watching it through like an Apple TV, or are you watching it through like your cable providers, the cable box, or? It's like the, the the TV that I have. I can I don't know what it's called. So now that you have, now down, that you have Apple, I know that it's 4K, and we watch. Uh, go ahead. So, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut you off. I, yeah, now that you have Apple product, go get you a 4K Apple TV box, and it's it's beautiful. Like it's it's beautiful. I'll tell you the name brand. Give me a sec. Hold on. Well, I think she's talking about like, like it's too good, right? It's like well, yeah, it's too good. Well, that's why because... that's my point behind it. Yeah. So if you have yeah, it's too good. So if you yeah, have the wow. TV, that's the so you have the, like the transcoders in there. So if you have the TV, but then your box is like pushing it like in like HD or because it wouldn't even be doing HDR. But if it's pushing the H, so the transcoder in the TV is a little bit more advanced than the actual cable box itself. So now it starts removing all of those filters and, it, and you don't see the green screen. <laughs> well, you can't see the green screen, but yeah, it's almost like you're watching the stage play. Dude, I don't even have a good one. It's a Hisense or Hisense, whatever it is, but it was like on ridiculously cheap at, at Best Buy. We just wanted a 4K to see what it was like. And I'm telling you, all these movies just like on, well, Peacock, Hulu, Netflix, whatever you're watching, it's all crap. Yeah, it's I that, can't tell you what I'm really watching because I'll get in trouble. I mean, why? Like you the four, whatever the you want to see on this channel. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. I'll tell you off channel. Maybe. Uh, but, I'll, um, I'll, def- I'll defend 4K for two reasons. Where, like, I, I agree with you, Marley. I've seen it where it's like it's too good. I've seen the blemishes and things you don't want to see. It's too clear. It's too clear. The two, the two things I like are actually sports. I'm, I'm, I'm cool with sports in 4K and video games. <laughs> like, I don't, yeah, I do like to watch my football games. I, I, I love because I mean like the one I have behind me it's an LG OLED uh 42 yes yeah, a 42 inch 42 inch TV and I got it hooked up to my Apple 4K TV yeah like, everything is is so it, it's it's coming down to the technology you hook up to it too like you hook up like a PlayStation 5 or even a PlayStation 4 up to since you have video oh, games well, like, Marlena plays video games yeah. too it right. looks oh. good and I'm not even talking about video games I'm like even if you're just streaming regular content it still looks good because now those filters are working together and it's well, we not to... go ahead, no, go ahead. Uh, yeah we talked about putting it because the graphics are amazing now i want to, we started to stream because my daughter was like oh mom because now that she's into it she's she went to round 14 without me on zombies and she unlocked all the maps on call of duty 3 so she's uh-huh. like we got to move it to the bigger screen because like i was like okay so putting it in there like you said the graphics from call mm-hmm. of duty 3 and you know their graphics were crap yeah. Like if you play that on just Xbox yep. or whatever on PlayStation. So we put our Xbox in there on that one on that. Now that does, it made it look just, I was impressed. So you're right. Like when it comes to video games and even mm-hmm. to use that on a PC, like I think I can use that as a monitor because right now we have it hooked up to the PC so that he can Roblox with my daughter and play like, um, they play some other game. Uh, she likes to do Sims too, but 
she gets on her iPad and they he gets on the computer and then they uh, screen it to the big one. What uh-huh. is it called? Screen share? Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And um, so he was talking, that's what we did. We set it all up in there. And you're talking about PC going PC. So I'm going to get a new gaming system in there and try to play PC on there. Yes, like get a game PC. Then we can play some, yeah, I'm going to get one game for sure. Game. But then how do you, so I got, before we go, how do you feel about artificial wombs as a woman? So I had mine and I regret the decision of getting an ablation in a tubal. Um, and I even tried to like go back and ask. So artificial, like I believe surrogate. I'm home for surrogate. Uh-huh. Um, I I think it's scientific. It comes to sci-fi for me. Artificial womb. Like I guess if I don't see it, I'm okay with the concept. If it's somebody who uh, really, I don't want to do it. And somebody keep cl- like cloning, like you see in the movies, and all these little cloned little babies are hanging somewhere in this little pod, just in this like goo. That's not what I'd want to watch. I don't want to have that imagination of it i mean it's it's no different so they have they have perfected artificial wombs and that's now been approved for human studies too so they grew a um uh what is it a goat or a sheep i think what it was they grew it an, an animal i think it was a dolly a yeah and they they grew it from no not in that was a clone they grew yeah, it from the cell and they actually had like an embryo in like the artificial the womb itself like in the bag in the womb itself mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so because they perfected it, now they've approved it for human studies. And the reason mm-hmm. I do like that, like in the instance, like even if you're talking about the preemies, in- right? You have right the preemies, you have mm-hmm. if you're talking about in vitro, now you can actually, as opposed to worrying about whether the cell will take inside of the woman, you can actually mm-hmm. grow it inside of the womb. Mm-hmm. Or for mm-hmm. women that can't have babies and you don't want to try to find a surrogate, you can grow it in their artificial womb. Or people that may have um, uh, birthing issues too, you can grow it in the womb. So mm-hmm. a lot of things that you won't have to worry about, you can now do it within a lab and do it safely within a lab. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the ex- I, I I think the experience would be gone. But again, if you're doing surrogate, you don't have the experience, or maybe even just touching somebody's belly. I think for me, that connection emotionally, I think that's a connection for me. Um, I agree, yeah. But I feel like it would help in the department of say a premature baby or say a mother who lost her life and the baby's still able to have a life. Um, I think in that case, I think it's brilliant. I think it's amazing. Like if, because my daughter, when, oh, sorry, I apologize. When my daughter was born that night, I went into labor and uh, she was about to come. Like she was coming to the world. And my doctor walked in and she says, um, I have a little bit of bad news. There has been an accident and the, the lady in the accident is pregnant and I need emergency surgery now. And I never heard Brahms lullaby. So I, to this day, believe the baby passed because the, the thing was that the every time the baby was born, they'd play Brahms Lullaby. And I was the only body, I was the only other person in the ward that night. Oh, that's a... Uh. So, and I never heard Brahms Lullaby, and I didn't have my daughter until, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon the next day. So I always had this, you know, for 11 years now, I've always had that thing, like, oh my God, that baby, did the baby survive? Did the mom survive? They never told me anything. It was not something I wanted to talk about because I was, doing, you know, celebrating the life of my daughter coming into the world, right? Yeah. So in that aspect, I'm 100% for it. Like if they could, if that baby, you know, could have been a, a, alive today because of the technology like that, I'm, wow, every hospital better have one of those things. Yeah, I, like I said, I'm, ex- I'm excited for the new tech that's coming out and I, I welcome it. I, I'll be Neo. I'm not yeah, yeah. The machines. <laughs> hey, my, <laughs> coming it's after so me. funny you said that today because my son uh, looked just like John Wick today. He uh, had to dress up in his, he dressed up all slick suit and tie and everything. And uh, he can't, he's got long red hair. Uh, and uh, I said, man, who, you look like that guy, that guy, that guy from the Matrix. And he goes, who, mama? I said, you know that guy, John <laughs> Yeah. And he goes, like, like John Wick. And I said, yeah. He looks just <laughs> like, uh, I need to send you that. I'll send you a picture because he looks yeah, just like. Cute. He looked just like John Wick. I was like, oh, that's my man right there. I was so proud. A little proud moment. So it was a while now. Yeah, thank you for uh, coming on to the show, Marlena. Hope it's not the last time I get to see you. Oh, no. Thank you for having me. I really had a good time. I appreciate it. I hope you invite me on again. And I, it's a pleasure meeting you, Jersey. I've, this is fun. We have to do this again. For yes. Sure. Because we needed, uh, we needed uh, some, um, some, uh, some, some women hormones onto this, uh, the show. It's always men talking, oh, yeah. especially when we talk about things that's involving women. I was like, it's always good to have the opposite sex on. Oh, me and Tony <laughs> are experts at the, the third trimester. Let me tell you, yes. exactly. 
Perfect. My husband's home. <laughs> <laughs> He's home for lunch. I hear. <laughs> so well, um, yeah. Lunch. I'm glad to be on here. Like I was telling them about. I'm like, we're gonna talk about games, and I was telling my husband. I said, you know what our conversation is today? Is you know, do I feel like technology is making us dumber? He just kind of chuckled. I was like, we talk about it all the time. You know, people are getting to be too lazy. Yes, we are. <laughs> well, one thing I do ask my guests if they can leave uh, like a final thought, something positive for the community. Be uniquely yourself and authentically you. Don't give taste to what the world has to say. And um, I end everything with, you know, we're still them boys. <laughs> I'm a Cowboys fan. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a Cowboys fan. <laughs> I live in Dallas and now. I'm there for a while. <laughs> I'm a Georgia boy. I'm, I'm, I'm Falcons all day, every day. They suck. Oh, I love my Cowboys. Day, yeah, I go Cowboys. I need to be on this podcast more often just so I can say good go Cowboys to your <laughs> listeners. Yeah, this, yeah. And I told you my best friend would love that. Uh John, well, let's final do it. Uh no, I just I mean uh Marlena, you're awesome and uh that's like you got some awesome views. Uh when it comes to technology, uh I'm all for you know being enthusiastic. I'll, I will say don't let it, the technology you know rule you. That being said, Hogwarts Legacy is a great game. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> As I'm teaching you. And uh, just uh, don't forget to be awesome. And keep thinking in general. Yes. Thank you again, Marlena. Yeah, you'll definitely be. I told you, you know, I was scoping you out anyway. Yes, you'll definitely be back on the uh, the show again. But <laughs> yeah, my final thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I love the advancement of technology. I'm excited about where we're going with it. And I don't mind it controlling you to a certain degree because I think us humans are crazy as hell. And I don't mind us having a governing body to make sure that we don't do anything stupid. Even though AI could technically have you doing that very thing, but I'm cool with that. But one thing I always say, <laughs> make sure you take your L's every day. Live, love, laugh. Live for the moment. Laugh for the things that you can't control. And always leave with your heart. Love with everything. So thank you all for tuning in. This is Matrix. That I'm the one who looks you in the eye. Speaking like I mean it, what's inside? I don't know. Play the part.